from K2 News. This is your voice, your vote. And good morning. I'm Brian Wood. Steve Dunn has the morning off. Oregon's new marijuana law is a top priority for the legislature when it meets in the new year. 56% of Oregon voters approved the legalization of recreational pot in November. Measure 91 says if you're at least 21 years old, you have the right to possess, smoke, and grow pot in Oregon. And whether you like it or not, it also gives lawmakers the right to make changes, and those changes need to be done soon. Today we're digging into the politics and the policy and the procedures as well of the new pot law. Joining me is State Senator Jenny Burdick. She is chairing the legislature's new Joint Committee on Implementing 91. And Oregon Liquor Control Commission Chair Rob Patridge, his agency will implement the law, any modifications the legislature makes, of course, deal with taxing, licensing, regulating. It's a long list of things you're going to have to do. Thank you both for being here with us. Thanks, Brian. Thanks for having us. Let's start off right with that question for Senator Burdick. Our viewers are asking, what right does the legislature have to alter Measure 91 since the voters already approved it as it was written? Well, this is a multi-page uh, law, and it's actually one of the better initiatives initiatives I've seen in terms of the detail, the thoughtfulness that went into it, but it's basically a bill. The fundamental issue is should marijuana be legal, and the voters said yes, but you can't expect the voters to go through and digest all the implications of 36 pages worth of technical detail, mm -hmm. and that's the legislature's job, and I think the voters are counting on us to make marijuana legal, accessible, fairly taxed, and and effectively regulated. It's a it's a tall order, no matter what. Uh, Rob, I know the OLCC has probably been receiving hundreds of calls since this passed. What are people saying? What are they calling about? You know, we've received hundreds of calls, and our marijuana.oregon.gov site has had 5,800 people sign up to receive wow. email related to marijuana, as well as thir over 33,000 hits. But people are asking everything from, can I get a job at the OLCC, sure. to um, <laughs> when will I be able to buy marijuana? what's the process and plan of implementation so it's soup to nuts we're just trying to uh, the legislature just granted us enough staff to really get things up and moving the so. education is really just beginning absolutely Jenny, right? uh, what are some of the the arguments maybe or the criticisms against measure 91 that you think have merit and that maybe should be addressed by the legislature well I think some of the concerns about 91 and maybe things that caused people to vote no were uh, I think they were worried about uh, children getting mm -hmm. access mm -hmm. to it. I think there are people who are worried about just drugs in our society. Uh, perhaps that was part of it. Uh, but the fact of the matter is that a majority of Oregonians, 12% uh, uh, margin, that's a sizable margin, voted to legalize marijuana. And so our job is to make it not only uh, legal, but to make it accessible. So, so I'm, you know, very uh, concerned about some of the efforts to uh, to try to uh, zone it out of locations, for uh, example. Uh, zoning, and we're going we're to get into that because because we heard that from uh, some of our viewers. Uh, Rob, any concerns about changing the measure since 56 percent of Oregonians supported it? Well, you know, I think that the legislature always tries to keep in the spirit of what the voters put in. But you know, this is such a new piece of right. uh, new thing for all Oregonians, and we had Washington and Colorado. And people have to remember that these ballot measures get written, then they go collect signatures on an initiative. Well, now we've had a benefit of well over a year of what's happened in Washington and Colorado, and I think that that's legitimately raised a lot of concerns from a regulatory agency mm -hmm. standpoint, as well as the legislature. We didn't have those things when voters were asked to sign the initiative to, to bring those things forth. So I, I think it's a balance. I think the legislature generally tries to keep the, the spirit of it, and Senator Burdick and I have worked together when I was a former state legislator, and I, I'm confident in the committee that we're going to work hand in hand with the mm -hmm. OLCC to keep the to keep the spirit of the measure in place but to also look at the lessons learned right. um, and we've heard many of them and apply those lessons absolutely and the, all the detail that, that goes into it one of the details of course you mentioned in that location 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 yeah. the OLCC will start accepting applications for marijuana retail stores what early 2016 and and we asked what kind of zoning rules would you like to see this opinion was offered by Sarah in Salem I think that it's a good idea to limit where the stores are, such as not near a school, because though it probably won't stop kids from getting it, it'll make it, it'll make the environment a little better. I feel like 
kids who are in elementary school, they shouldn't be seeing dispensaries near where they're supposed to be learning. But, but we heard from other Measure 91 supporters who say pot retail stores don't need to be in certain places, certain distances away from, example, daycares and schools, since the state doesn't do that for cigarettes or alcohol. Jenny, what are you hearing about this zoning issue? You know, I have a co-chair, uh, Ann Leininger, who's a, uh, in the House of Representatives. This is, a, as you said, a joint committee. Uh, she has a lot of expertise in the land use issue, and one of her members is actually a land use attorney, and I tend to rely uh, on them heavily for their expertise on this issue. I think it's really important to strike a balance, to have reasonable location standards, so, you know, so it isn't right next door to a school, for example. But if you set it too stringently, then you're basically going to be zoning them out of existence. But how do you deal with what we heard Sarah say, which was there might be a 7-Eleven serving liquor right next to a, a school. Why not right. have a pot store right next to a school? Right, and it's a balancing. Mm -hmm. This is a new area, uh, and we need to talk to all Oregonians and really make a balance. Nobody's going to have it 100% the way they like it, and that's just the nature of political compromise. And if you look at our committees, we represent areas from all o over Oregon, areas that voted very strongly for Measure 91, those who voted against it, and we will make compromises. But I think it's important to keep our, our focus on the fact that it is legal, which means it must be accessible. It must be reasonably accessible. But it also is very important to protect, you know, community values. And Rob, the OLCC clearly has to deal with this when it comes to, 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 to liquor stores, to stores selling booze. Uh, how do you balance the concerns of neighbors versus the rights of retailers? Yeah, and I, I think it's a combination of what the legislature puts into place from the legislative perspective for statewide law. Then us from a rules standpoint, the OLCC is going to obviously play a role in that. But it's also the role of the local government, and I don't think anybody in the legislature wants to overrun the the local government's ability to to set the standard, help set some of those standards for their own community as well. And we try not to do that at the OLCC. You know, it's it's going to be an interesting thing as this occurs because some of these communities may choose to totally opt out under the way the right. the the initiative was passed, mm -hmm. but it depends on what the legislature decides to do, too. Right. So it's going to be an interesting balance. And you have to deal with it statewide. Some very small communities, rural communities, urban communities, everybody has a different standards. Right, and it has to happen at the general election. So the scalability of what we're going to do at OLCC, right. how we're going to scale up in terms of trying to even staff the thing is going to be interesting with the current opt-out provision that's in the legislature. Well, let's talk about the timeline, sort of the Absolutely. mechanics of this ahead for you as far as implementing this. Uh, what are the timelines and what are the timelines that maybe concern you the most? From the OLCC's perspective, you know, July 1st, 2015, this upcoming year, is really when we're, what we're calling the home grow provisions come into effect. Mm -hmm. People can start growing it at their own house, um, for plants, uh, and a variety of those things. So those things come into effect, but then on top of that, um, we're supposed to take licenses by January 5th, 2016 and start processing those licenses, but depending on uh, what the legislature's actions are, we've got to kind of wait on some of those things until we start the rulemaking process. So, you know, I, we're going to work hand in hand together. I think we've got a great relationship between the OLCC and the Oregon legislature. We have great personal relationships with the senator and, and other members of the committee. And I think it, we're just going to have to work through this thing so that it's done in a safe and responsible manner uh, to make sure that it meets the spirit of the, le of the legislation. You talk about working hand in hand. What do you need from the hand? hand of the legislature for the OLCC. Do you need to expand? What, what needs to happen to, to make this work? Absolutely. The liquor funds are sequestered and only supposed to be spent for liquor related um, items and then go basically to the state general fund um, to a great degree. Um, we're going to need staff. We anticipate at this point in time about 30 staff. Mm. Um, it's going to be about six and a half million. Um, but that's what we're anticipating. But those were re really rough numbers that we came up with. We're trying to refine that, figure out you know, where the feds are at related to the computer systems we're going to have to have to track all this marijuana. 
um, what provisions the legislature is going to ask us to do. So it's a moving ball and moving sand yes. at this point in time. Involving and, a lot of you know, people. And I think we, we have not received any resistance. In fact, the legislature funded us more money than we had originally thought because we're so concerned about the computer systems. Uh, we asked K2's Facebook followers if, if they thought any changes should be made to Measure 91. And Chad Olin wrote this. Yes, the edible should not look like candy, period. But Samantha Lee writes, alcohol comes in pretty bottles that kids may think is juice or soda, but it's an adult's responsibility to keep it out of the reach, just like any medicine. That brings us to marijuana-infused edibles, serious issues there. Uh, medical marijuana patients say they need the edibles to stay, but parents have real concerns that the children will be attracted to the brownies, to the cookies. How are you going to balance that? Washington and Colorado have had to deal with this. Um, edibles uh, is an important issue because of the impact on children and I'm telling you if you don't do it right we will have the long arm of the federal government uh, reaching into our state we need to do that right and it's possible that the edibles area may take more time uh, to actually get a good resolution because some medical users do you know for whatever reason they can't smoke or take pills or however else they do it However, uh, you, you have to be, it has to be a balancing. If, if we have things that are clearly uh, attractive to children, that, that is going to be a real concern. On this and, and many other subjects, what direction, Rob, do you want to see from the legislature when it comes into implement, implementing this, this new way of doing business, if you will? Well, I think that we're looking for the legislature, especially on things like edibles, especially on, you know, a lot of technical mm -hmm. things that we're, frankly, just spending the time and the staff to really look through what those technical things are. And I think that that's going to be one of the first things that we're going to work with with the committee is what kind of regulatory things, just as it currently exists, we're going to need to make this to make this law work so that it's, it, it's doable. Um, that we're going to have the staff and the ability and the bright line tests right. that we need. So, you know, I, we've had some preliminary discussions. Senator Burdick is coming up to speed. The whole OLCC is coming up to speed and her entire committee. So, you know, at this point in time, I can't give you a bunch of specifics as to sure. what it is, but, you know, there that's will what be specifics. There, there's going to be specifics yeah. very soon. Yeah. Uh, they convene in February, and yeah. uh, we're working and we're going to take a group on the road, and we're actually going to hear from local cities and counties and law enforcement and the grower community while we're out there. So they're going to give us a good idea, too. And my co-chair, Ann Leininger, and I plan to go as many to as many of these listening mm -hmm. sessions as we can. Uh, our job is to make the right policy changes that need to be made uh, you know, based on, on the concerns that we have about the measure and to give OLCC clear policy direction and to work hand-in-hand -hand with OLCC to make sure that we've got the factual basis we need. They have a, a very well-informed uh, expert running the marijuana uh, program, Tom Burns, mm -hmm. who's run the medical marijuana program. And I think just in my surface learning on this, there's a lot to, uh, that we can learn from the medical marijuana program. And a reminder that once Measure 91 goes into effect, uh, people who are 21 and older can possess up to eight ounces of dried pot and have up to four plants in their home. Some say that's too much for personal use. Here's what K2 Facebook follower Don Morris wrote on that topic. This plant is so much safer than alcohol. I'm a little baffled at the quantity issue. What are the laws concerning home brew? Keep it on par and there aren't going to be too many problems. Nothing that isn't already there. Most likely much less. Driving high should be as stiff a penalty as alcohol, which in my opinion should be much stiffer than it is now. That's what Don right. Uh, Jenny, how much uh, can you possess? Is that is that something the legis legislature can address? It is something. I mean, we can address anything in the bill, and as far as I'm concerned, the entire initiative is open uh, to discussion, uh, aside from the actual uh, question of legalization. I, I'm less interested in amounts than I am in the, in the fundamental goal, which is to keep the uh, marijuana uh, trade out of the black market to make sure that we properly regulate it, properly tax it, 
and that we don't have uh, leakage in that system. Won't that be especially hard because people in Oregon will be able to grow it in their homes? I, I, I do think it does from a regulatory standpoint make it more difficult. You know, we look to Washington State where home grow is prohibited. Colorado. And then Colorado uh -huh. has six plants. So every state is very, very different. Yeah. And like Jenny said, we're going to have to do this Oregon's way. We're going to have to make this work for Oregonians, and we're going to have to stay within the spirit of what goes on. Uh, we heard that a little bit in uh, uh, Don's email uh, talking about balancing alcohol and marijuana. Are, are there similarities? Is it sort of the same business, just a different way you consume this? Well, I, I, it's a, I mean, from the OLCC standpoint, yeah. we're, we're regulating, and it's a, there are different types of systems, but that's what we do. We, we regulate the alcohol pieces, and we're doing the same thing. We, we're doing the same types of things on marijuana, but they're very different businesses, for sure. Well, Jenny, a, a critical issue, driving impaired. Uh, right. You want to deal with that when it comes to this in the legislature? I, I don't think there's any way we can avoid it. Uh, the problem with uh, marijuana is there is no good test. Right. Uh, to, to uh, basically establish impairment. Uh, so they have to do field testing, which they do for other drugs. Uh, there are some people who say you should have a blood test, but that is very invasive. Uh, there's no, uh, as to my understanding, there's no effective breathalyzer test. And even if you do a blood test, uh, marijuana stays in your system long after you're impaired. So how do you, how do you judge? And uh, another opportunity maybe to learn from Washington and Colorado as they move forward on this. When we come back, should cities get a cut of the pot pie? They think so. From K2 News, this is your voice, your vote. Welcome back. I'm Brian Wood filling in this morning for Steve Dunn, and I'm joined by Senator Jenny Burdick and OLCC Chair Rob Patridge. We're talking about the new law about marijuana in Oregon. A lot of people concerned about Oregon's medical marijuana program, wondering if it will be merged with the new recreational pot or they'll be kept separate. Where do you think this is going to land, Jenny? You know, I, the, the world has changed for marijuana. We've had a medical marijuana program for years, and uh, it exists because marijuana was illegal. And now that marijuana is legal, you have to re-examine uh, how the medical fits in in the grand scheme of things. And we, I, I have an open mind about it. Mm -hmm. uh, I want, whatever we do, I want it to be as efficient as possible. I don't want to be spending a lot of money that doesn't have to be spent on separation where it's not necessary. Uh, so I'll be looking at it very carefully. Rob, could this really complicate matters for the OLCC? You know, I think it's, I, I think if the legislature decides to change it in an artful manner, I think that we'll be there hand in hand with them to make sure, as, Jen, as Senator Burdick said, to, that uh, we're going to keep costs low and try and make the system as efficient as we can if that's what we're asked to do. And, you know, I think we're prepared to do it. The, the systems are fairly similar mm -hmm. um, and could be fairly similar. Uh, another big issue, local taxes on the sale of pot. Cities certainly want them, but Measure 91 says that only the state is allowed to tax marijuana. Cities say they need the money because they'll have the startup costs with the measure's implementation. I, I, is there a middle ground on this, do you think? I think there's a lot of potential middle ground. I think the important thing is to have the taxation set at a level that is uh, generates enough revenue to to give the cities among others and also uh, is low enough so that it doesn't encourage people to continue with the illegal market uh, uh, what about timing on this you've got a year or so to get the ball rolling washington state sort of gave itself about that amount of time but even then they admit that they stumbled out of the gate right uh, what are you learning from washington and oregon about implementing well i, I uh, washington think, colorado yeah, I you know, we're learning the uh, the issues that they had. Um, we're learning, uh, you know, some of the issues related to how the implementation went forth. Um, and we'll be right there before the committee. We don't want to stumble. We don't want to push it out the gate if we're not ready to go. Um, we're going to let. The, that's why I said I th think it's critical that we're going to work with the legislature. You know, people have to also realize, that, like in Washington State. Um, they had a lot of issues related to what, when product became available. Right. Yeah. Um, people need to realize that even though we're, right now we're set up to January 2016 to start license to start processing mm -hmm. licenses, that doesn't mean that immediately uh, retail 
right. locations you know pop up I mean we have to do a seed to sale system so there has to be a whole growth a cycle lot of lead time. and there has to be a whole drying cycle and a production cycle and then the retail stores can come up so it'll, it'll be a while here's a comment from one of our Facebook fans Angela flood says they should block individual cities from passing ordinance that essentially keep the state law out of their city uh, Jenny we've seen this in, in Washington State will you be addressing cities that want to opt out of marijuana retail stores you know I think this has to be handled very carefully I'm a, a great believer in in local control and I think that the government closest to the people should have a big say I think there are other ways to deal with the issue I think uh, you know the way the tax structure is set up the way the allocation formula is set up I think I, I would rather see a system of encouragement rather than a system of uh, you know, setting down the firm, firm law to prevent cities from doing things. I want to touch on a couple of things in the last couple of minutes we have. Rob, let, let's talk about statewide listening tour th that you mentioned. Tell us a little bit about that. What can people expect? So what people can expect is we're going to we're going to get out the end of January and first part of February um, to try and get throughout Oregon to get a good idea of what Oregonians are feeling like. We're inviting, we're trying to get everybody's groups and everything in line. We're encouraging Oregonians to sign up for marijuana.oregon.gov. Um, all the information will be there as we set that up. The dates, times, uh, how you can participate. So marijuana.oregon.gov is going to be crucial to, to that. But we're going to hear what people have to say and we're going to look, we're going to invite local government, we're going to invite local law enforcement and schools and, and the treatment community and those that are impacted. Hearing a lot of voices. Uh, Jenny, you have one minute for this one. What's the legislature's next step when it comes to developing policy? Well, uh, we're going to do much of the same thing that uh, OLCC and I really commend the OLCC for doing this uh, listening tour. I want everybody at the table. I want the, the people who pass the measure, but I also want law enforcement, the treatment community, the medical community, the research community. Uh, I want everybody there, the cities, counties, uh, at the table because this is an Oregon uh, this is an Oregon issue. All Oregonians need to participate. And I am determined to work hand in glove with the uh, OLCC because it is a very ambitious uh, implementation schedule. And we must get it right. We absolutely must get it right. Senator Burdick, thank you very much for joining us. Thank OLCC you for Chair Rob Partridge. Patridge, thank you very much. Thank we'll you. be back right after this. Thanks for watching this morning. The legalization of marijuana will bring an entire new industry to Oregon. All the unpredictable implications that will come along with it. Remember to follow your voice, your vote on Twitter at your voice underscore K2 and make us part of your news feed. Steve will be back next week. I'm Brian Wood. Have a good day.